and our attention is gently on this presence, this being, the self, who is the witness of all these thoughts, perhaps feelings that come and go. And so this being, you can visualize this being as light, as a star. Imagine that this presence is like a living star. We're experimenting with this. And this being of light, of energy, is free from thoughts. He experiences sweet silence within. And within this silence, there is a feeling of being at home, a feeling of rest. security, contentment. It feels so good, as if nothing is lacking. We stay just for one more minute in this silence. And we come back in the awareness of this physical room that we are in, this physical world, this session that we are sharing together. Our aim is to maintain this feeling that perhaps feels new, although it has always been there, it may feel new. And if we touch such feelings within us, then the way we relate with others, with life, it may be the same people, it may be the same situations, but there is a feeling of newness. So before we continue, I would like to ask you if there is something you would like to share. You like to share something that perhaps you experienced during this small exercise together. So, I would consider your silence as um, the topic today is about your consciousness, your life, and I would like to check if your uh, mics are on mute. Thank you. <coughs> so, although it's not the new year to have uh, new resolutions, but we can have every moment and every day uh, some bringing some newness into our life. We don't need external factors. 
uh, we can choose to experience newness in our life every day. It is in our hands. Except that we need to understand a few factors, new par uh, some parameters, some factors, uh, and also the way, the method to bring this newness. And everyone likes newness in their life. Every, everything actually that um, people do in this world is connected with uh, experiencing something. Uh, life itself means feeling. So whatever we do, with, whether we realize it or not, whether it is conscious or unconscious, uh, choice, behind this choice, we aim for experiencing something, feeling something. So life itself is about feelings. Everything you do, small things, big things, Example, why did you choose to be part of this session? Why do you choose a certain kind of clothes, colors, whatever uh, style? Why you choose a partner? Why you choose um, a specific place for holidays, a specific color for uh, your um, room, your house? Um, it's very different aspects of life, but if we track it, I'm not sure if this is the right word, but um, we will find that uh, behind all choices, what we're looking for is something to feel. Life is about feelings. All the time we want to feel something or the other, some quality, some kind of experience. So, and this is great, we are here for this, but the thing is that what we feel does, um, feels, what we experience feels not to be enough, not to be sufficient in a sense, there is some kind of restlessness. Um, do you agree with this? Do you also observe in your life that, have you noticed that within us there is some kind of seeking all the time for the next feeling? So there is some feeling of what's next? What's next? What am I going to do next in order to, um, to feel good? So, um, is this natural? To have feelings is our nature, but is it also natural to feel all the time uh, this search for feelings, seeking for these feelings? And uh, as I mentioned earlier, especially young people, but adults also have this feeling of boredom very easily. I happen to come from um, education background. I've been a teacher at some point in high schools and having some uh, private tutoring, tutoring <laughs> even now, um, it's very clear how children really are so restless and they become more and more restless all the time looking for some new stimuli from outside, some excitement from outside to feel uh, good just for moments and then again and again and again trying to find another source for them to feel good. So is this natural? Is this our nature to always look for new experiences, for new feelings and these experiences, these feelings can be either physical or I would say spiritual feelings and we're going to come to this. So we agree that yes, uh, life 
I guess that we agree, I assume that we agree, that life is about experiencing, not feeling empty, but feeling full, feeling full of a uh, variety of feelings. Um, but somehow this is not the case now, in the sense that um, instead of feeling full, it looks like something is missing all the time. So what to do now if this is happening to me? If, let's say, right now I observe myself, my inner invisible world, and I see that, yes, I, I don't feel full, I don't feel complete. Uh, why is this happening and what can I do? Uh, before I continue, I would like to see if there is anything you would like, you would like to share until now, if you relate to all of this. I feel very restless at the time after uh, the day finishes. I feel very restless that I, I didn't do anything, just wasted my I feel like that. Like wasted, sorry? I, uh, I feel like that I have not uh, fulfilled my day and I don't feel like happy about my day that uh, finishes. I see, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Sisters could also like be that yes. maybe we, sorry. Please. Okay. It could also be, sister, um, uh, is it because we are not accepting of what comes our way and maybe we are expecting more than what we should accept? Mm -hmm. um, I think if we really feel the true nature of the self. We don't feel this gap, something missing. It's not about accepting it. If I don't feel well, if I don't feel good, I have to do something about it. It's not about accepting it. Yes, accepting it, but also changing it. Because this is not our nature. We are not meant to feel like this. So uh, it is a very good step that one uh, sees this feeling, acknowledges its existence, and then without reacting to it in a negative way, meaning not feeling bad about this feeling, then I do something about it. And I think by the end of these sharings will have some uh, keys or some tools in our hands to start doing something that is going to bring results not later but today. So hopefully by the end of the day if you practice um, and uh, definitely tomorrow if you start your day practicing thinking in this way because it is all about the way we think then the feeling by the end of the day will be that I had a day that I would like to repeat. So, um, anything else before we continue? Okay, so as I said, I assume that uh, uh, you all relate in one way or the other with what we are sharing, but if you don't, please feel free to share your thoughts. So, feelings. Uh, do we agree that feelings perhaps is the most important thing for all of us? And that this is why we are doing what we are doing? So, when we want to bring some kind of newness in our life, for example, in the 
New Year uh, or any other occasion that we use in order to bring some newness, newness in our life. Perhaps what we think of is what new things I can do or new things I can have in order to experience something different, something new. Experiencing newness uh, is uh, uh, part of our nature in the sense that our nature itself, the qualities of the self, give the feeling of newness. Uh, in the sense you never feel bored, you never feel, oh, this is the same feeling. In the same way, when we eat uh, similar food uh, or the same food regularly, somehow we never feel that uh, uh, bored with it. I mean, uh, perhaps we eat uh, the same breakfast or if not every day, every second day, but every time there is this feeling of newness, you don't feel bored with it. So whatever is natural, um, you don't feel uh, bored with it. So experiencing this feeling of newness is very fine. It's, it's, nothing is wrong with it, wanting this newness. But when we experience the true nature, and I'm going to come back to this because I've already used it quite a few times, true nature of the self, and what is this self, and what is the nature of the self. So when we experience this, then there is not this restlessness because the self himself gives this feeling of newness of not feeling bored so when we experience our true nature then you don't seek for anything you are you feel all the time this sensation of newness so feeling this newness is our nature so seeking for it is very fine, but it's also an indication that perhaps we're not connected with our true nature. Otherwise, we wouldn't feel that something is missing. So we were saying how when um, we look for something new, which, as we said, is an indication that perhaps we're doing something wrong in the way we see things, we see life, we see self. So uh, what we think when we try for newness, uh, often is about what to do and what to have. Um, what can I do differently? What, what new thing can I have? So is it about doing? Is it about having? So the list of the things we're thinking, bringing newness in, uh, uh, contains usually um, going somewhere, changing job, having a new car, changing friends. Uh, um, I mean, not only that, of course, uh, certain habits, uh, different ways of um, uh, doing what we're doing in our everyday life. But today we are going to see how the real newness and the real change and um, the real improvement does not come necessarily from what we do at the external level, which is also necessary uh, at some point, but um, it's all about how we think. And um, just to become more aware of something that we have heard perhaps, or so obvious that we all know that uh, before anything else, what comes first is our consciousness. And consciousness, which is a little bit uh, not abstract, but not perhaps as uh, obvious uh, uh, of what it is, it's connected with feelings again, it's connected with awareness, it's connected with what we think, our perce perception, um, our memories. Um, consciousness is this incognito uh, um, energy. 
and um, there is a source to it. And for the moment, just to say that when we say the self and when we say I, perhaps uh, in order to uh, make our sharings more tangible and easier, uh, to say that the self, the real I, is the source of our consciousness. And we can create an image, we can visualize the self for the time being, and then we'll explore more, as a point of light, as a source of light, as a star. So when we say self, we are used to this physical body, but let us now bring some newness in the way we perceive the self. We can think of the self, we can visualize the self instead of this huge body, this physical body, as a source, as a star, uh, light, energy, which is the source of the consciousness. In other words, the source of all these thoughts and associated feelings and all these invisible faculties that we experience all the time, but we're not clear uh, where they come from and uh, uh, who is um, creating them, who is using them, who is the master of them. So there is someone thinking, there is someone feeling, there is someone deciding, discriminating, remembering, as someone who has attention on something, concentrates. So many subtle things, faculties happen. Where are they happening? Who is the source of them? So we can say that the source of all of these cognitive uh, uh, faculties is the true self, the I. So the self is like a source of light and this self, this source of energy, light, um, is the creator of all of these uh, faculties. So, is this clear? <laughs> because we already spoke about the nature of the self, and so uh, it is good to explain a little bit in the beginning, from the beginning, uh, when we say self, what do we mean? Because usually when uh, we use the word I or the word self, the first thing that comes in our mind is this physical body. So if you ask a person, who are you? Immediately, they, they will start giving you information about their name, their nationality, their past, their actions, their memories, what happened in their life. So um, the gender, of course, all these physical aspects. So it's a big newness. <laughs> It's a very new thing to start seeing the self instead of this physical body and all these associated roles uh, to see the self as um, the source of consciousness, the source of thoughts and feelings. And we are saying that, uh, yes, uh, when we are thinking about newness, we are thinking about actions and uh, possessions about doing things at this physical level and acquiring things, having new things. But there are two aspects to life. There are two energies at play. One is this physical world and this physical world is what we call uh, physical energy. Uh, everything's energy. Uh, but there are two energies at play. One is this energy that does not have consciousness, does not have awareness, does not know about its existence. And the whole physical world is this kind of energy. In essence, of course, Lisa is there and can explain many more things, or perhaps you're already aware of all of this. But... Um, just to create a kind of model, a kind of formula for us 
to know what to do after we finish this session. So um, it's good for us to clarify uh, that what we see, what our senses perceive is nothing else except this energy that has not got awareness of its existence. It cannot say, I exist, does not have consciousness. And uh, this includes our body as well. This physical body is part of this energy, is made of this energy. But there is another kind of energy that is the energy that we described already, the self. This source of life, of consciousness. So when we see ourselves, uh, when we think of the self, of the human being, actually, uh, there are both energies there. One is the physical body, but within this body, um, somewhere uh, near the brain, there is this source of life that makes this body uh, work and this is the one who perceives life. So everything happens within this um, invisible, subtle source of consciousness. This comes primarily before anything else, before anything else, before creating anything at this physical world, before experiencing anything in this physical world. Um, the creator and the experiencer is the self. So if we want to create newness, if we want to experience newness, we should address this invisible energy. And everything will become uh, uh, hopefully clearer by the end of the session. It may sound a little bit philosophical. I uh, apologize for my Greek background. Um, but uh, hopefully it will be more practical. But uh, we need some basic um, uh, reminders because we all know these things, but we have forgotten them. We all know that uh, within this physical body, within this what we call human being, there is someone talking within the head. Is it true that within our head, there is a constant dialogue, someone talking. And this comes first, before we speak, before we act, before we perform in whatever way on this stage of life. Before anything else, what comes first is the self, the consciousness. In other words, the way we think, what we are aware of, where we give our attention to. This comes first. So let us um, use a kind, kind of magnifying glass uh, to see what's going on in our consciousness. If we understand how consciousness works, how the self works, how this invisible being uh, functions, then we'll be, make, we'll be able to make some adjustments, some modifications, if it's necessary. Maybe for some of you it's not necessary, everything is great, but if uh, we want to bring something, some newness to make things a little bit differently, maybe we have to understand more um, the self, the source of consciousness, our consciousness, and then this will take care of our life, of anything else. Because what is life other than what we feel and feelings are connected with the way we think, with our awareness, with our consciousness. Not with what we do, not with what we have. We are used to, um, we have all uh, bought into this myth of um, outside in that uh, things happen outside, that the needs and the resources and whole life is happening outside, 
in this physical world, in this physical dimension, uh, which does not have life, basically. The physical world does not have life, does not have feelings. So we have bought into this myth that things happen out there, and uh, then according to what happens out there in this physical world, we create our inner life. But here we bring the newness in the way we see this very fundamental aspect, which is the inside out <laughs> myth, not myth, reality, fact that what is true is that what happens within us in our own mind, in our own consciousness, defines, has um, a reflection on this physical world. So we often use the example of um, um, trees and nature. And I happen to be right now on the top of the mountains of uh, uh, Lebanon. Uh, Lisa has visited and she can imagine, uh, I mean, we don't need to live here to imagine trees and mountains. <laughs> I'm sure in California is, uh, uh, perhaps much, much richer. And I must admit, uh, uh, when I was there, I really resonated with uh, the people and nature. So if we think of nature, and especially of trees, but in general of nature, uh, we should, uh, uh, I, I hope we agree that what we uh, see is part of the picture of the full picture. We see the trees, but the physical eyes, the senses don't grasp, I mean, don't see the um, roots and what is underneath the soil. We see half picture or much less than half because there is so much going on underground. So we're not aware of it. We're not aware of the roots, the seed, which is the most important thing actually of what we see, of what we perceive as a reality. So we can say in the same way with us. So if you think of a person that you have known for a long period of time, uh, you uh, think of them uh, as the physical form of what they have said, of what they have done. Uh, so we see the physical aspect of them. But there is uh, another aspect, which is their thoughts and their feelings, which have created what they have said and what they have done. And of course, we uh, are all aware that there is this subtle communication, subtle exchange of feelings, or there is these um, qualities that we are sharing when we connect with others. Uh, but somehow uh, we think of life and we have a tendency to give more attention and to uh, highlight more the physical aspect. Although um, uh, unconsciously probably, we understand that uh, what is more important is the, what we call personality. And um, uh, after some time, people that live together uh, more closely and for a longer period of time, they, they know that uh, the other person is not just their nose and their eyebrows and, um, you know, it's, it's the, the personality, the qualities that uh, uh, they express, express through this physical instrument, through this body. So we are here today to understand and take care of this aspect of the self, which is the true self. And it looks like it has been neglected. And uh, the whole world has neglected what is the seed of life. Because, yes, one thing is the tree that we see, but the problem is not in the leaves. If there is a problem in the tree or nature, 
so we see some uh, dry yellow leaves or we see some, uh, some kind of sickness in uh, uh, nature. So then we have to address the seed, we have to address the roots, because this is where the whole life comes from, whether it is good or some sickness in any area. So the same thing with our life. So if um, something is going wrong with our own feelings, first of all, how we uh, feel 24 hours, because uh, the, the constant companion is our self, and self is our consciousness and our feelings. So if there's something uh, going wrong there, if there is uh, some problem then uh, with our body, um, some kind of sickness in one way or another, uh, if we have some scarcity uh, uh, of health or scarcity of time, always uh, looking for something, something is missing, looking for something, looking for more time at something, but uh, um, we always feel that we don't have time enough. We are chasing over um, after something. Uh, if we feel uh, that we don't have um, a good uh, and um, satisfaction, if there is uh, absence or scarcity of uh, good feelings and fulfillment in our relationships. Uh, if there is uh, some scarcity in, you understand scarcity, I mean, is it clear the way I pronounce because I have this Greek accent? <laughs> so, uh, if there is um, a scarcity in um, uh, uh, wealth, material wealth, so all of these are the reflection of my consciousness. So, if we want to bring some newness in our life, it is absolutely necessary. It's the first thing I have to examine, to address and change. And this is my way of thinking, my consciousness, the way I perceive things, what I'm aware of, uh, what is my mindset for the self and the life. What are the glasses I'm wearing when I think of myself, when I think of life? So, shall we um, pause here a little bit and uh, see if there are some thoughts that you would like to share? Is there any tool that we can do in the morning and that remain in the whole night, whole day with me that I am energy, I am soul, I am light? Yes, sure. Um, there are some uh, uh, practices that we're going to introduce some practical tools uh, for us to uh, change our consciousness and our life to bring this newness. Um, but before we come to, uh, to this, just to create a foundation. So it's not just technical, but uh, it is, um, uh, it has to come from a little bit deeper understanding of what's going on within us. So, um, anything else you would like to share in connection with uh, what we shared already? I have done my, excuse me. I have done my Raj Yoga meditation, the course, but uh, I think I didn't do daily practical meditation. That's why I am. 
feeling like that. Yes, sure, sure. For yeah. the ones who have already exposed themselves to, yes. the, uh, to this information um, yes. of Raj Yoga, um, yes. it's good just to be reminded. And um, uh, then uh, some of us here in this uh, uh, meeting, in the session, uh, perhaps are new. So um, we will come to the practice because we want to leave from this uh, meeting uh, having some tools. Uh, but uh, uh, just to ask uh, with in, in connection with what we shared so far, uh, if this is clear, if uh, there is anything you would like to share. It's clear. Uh, and if you don't uh, uh, have anything to say, if there are some mics that are on, would you mind to mute them? Because this allows the sound to come through more clearly for everyone. Thank you. Just check your mics. So, uh, so, Our way of thinking is the what defines our life. So what have we been thinking all our life? So let us now have a little bit of reflection. So if I take these few minutes to reflect in other words, to become aware, to give my attention to this inner, invisible world of mine, each one of us. Has this inner universe, invisible. inner life, but somehow we got distracted and our attention, our awareness has been scattered and always focused on the external physical world. So we now choose to draw our attention gently inwards. So we become aware, we just think of this source of life. Somewhere within our head, we visualize a star. We just play with this thought. Experimentation, this is just an experimentation. So, we experiment with letting go of this physical world, this physical dimension. And just for little time, just for one minute, we aim very gently to keep the attention on this source of life, source of consciousness. So everything that we have ever thought or remembered or felt, everything 
that we have ever experienced, even the physical experiences, are happening within this source of light, of life, energy that we are. And so we now experiment with bringing some silence within this inner world. Ordinarily, there is kind of chaos. So many thoughts scattered everywhere. Whether it is in time, thinking of the past in a second, thinking of the future in a split second, of places, of people, of stories, all of these happen all the time within our head. In fact, within this source of consciousness of life. Now we see that there is another option that we didn't know or perhaps we forgot. And this option is instead of identifying with all these thoughts and feelings, we can choose to give our attention to the source himself of this life. So we now give our attention to this star that is the witness Again, ordinarily, this witness, this star, is identifying all the time with thoughts and feelings that come out of habit, almost out of compulsion. But now, it is like they are creating distance between this star, the source of all these thoughts and feelings, and his creation. So there is the creator. The creator is this source. This light. It's like we detach the creator from his creation. The creator was lost in his creation. So the creator is not the thoughts. Thoughts are his creation. Creator is silent. And in his silence now, he experiences himself, his nature. His nature is contentment. His nature is joy. His nature is love, natural. All of this happens in a natural way. And we check for how long can stay, giving the attention for how long we can gently focus our attention on this silent creator, silent star, rather than the creation, than the thoughts. So if thoughts come, We allow them to come and go and bring back the attention on this silent, 
being. And as we continue these sharings, this communication, <clears throat> we see that we have this choice to experience the self and to even interact with any aspect of life that is while listening, while, while doing something, we always have the option to do it either from a space of silence, either by being this silent star, being aware of this silent presence, or from a space of noise, all the time thinking a lot, being noisy within us, all the time commenting, judging, uh, having expectations, because this is what's happening in the mind, complaining, disliking, liking, desiring. So, I can experience my life and this means I can connect with myself or relate to myself or with others or with whatever happens in front of my eyes either from a space of silence, just allowing everything to happen, or from a space of noise, all the time thinking about everything. The habit that the whole world has is experiencing life that is very noisy and very busy anyways at the external level, but this is one thing. The other thing is the inner noise. So we experience life in a very noisy way. In other words, all the time saying something about everything that happens. So a new thing that we can do to experience newness in our life is to choose consciously to be this silent star, this silent being, this silence. Imagine that there is someone silent that observes everything. And because the habit is so different, we have the habit of all the time saying something about everything, <laughs> even things that have passed or things that have, have not even happened yet in the future. Uh, we have uh, a habit of uh, thinking all the time about others and saying something about everything about them, their appearance, their actions, their ways of, you know, behaving. So this is a very strong habit that we have had. And we can check it within us if we dislike this or not. So when you think of something or someone or a situation, immediately so many other thoughts follow. We have a story to say about everything. So this is one way of experiencing life. This is a mindset, a consciousness we have. 
Can we change it? Can we replace it with silence? And what would help in this to bring the silence is, and this comes to the question that came earlier, how to, what habit, what to do every day. So one thing to do is to see the full picture when we see others, when we think of others, when we think of life. And what does this full picture mean? You know, when uh, we see others, as we already said, usually, not only usually, always, we think of the body. We think of this physical aspect of their existence. Then we say human being. We think of the human aspect, which is this body, which is this energy that doesn't have life, does not have consciousness. But we don't see the being, we don't see the real person, the self, which is this life that we're ready, the source of life, life the star that is the source of life and creates this subtle energy, subtle body around this physical body. It is this subtly conscious energy that animates the body and makes it move. And it is this being that experiences everything. So if we want to experience newness in, in our life, this is such a radical and uh, in a way necessary step to do. Um, and this will take care of any aspect of newness really in our life because there are so many things we can share, so many other aspects we can highlight about the newness, but maybe if we want to go, if we want to share the essence, what would be the most essential step to do is this, is to see the full picture when we see others. So this brings a natural silence. It's a very new way of relating to this world, of living our life. So when I see others, I can have this habit. I can start creating this way of thinking because habits are created with one thought first, or there's always the first time I do something, and then I do it second time, then third time, and then it becomes a habit, which means almost natural. So this is a very, very, very good habit to create, which is to see the full picture when I see, when I think of others. So right now, um, uh, we already have so many people in our life and we have seen them not as they really are. We have seen only their human aspect, only the body. But now we can think of them right now. We can see the full picture. We can see a star shining behind their eyes. This is who they are. This is who we, we are. And so when we create, when we start this habit now and repeat it again and again, as often as possible every day, this will bring silence. The moment we think of others as a body, this brings uh, so much noise within us. The moment we see others as these beings of light, this brings silence. This is the eternal self. This is the real person that exists forever. And this is another newness in the way we see life. Because when we see the spiritual being, I mean, the being, when we see the true self, who is a spirit, then what comes with it is its nature. The spirit has his own nature, and the nature of the self is. Eternity. In fact, matter is also eternal, but 
the synthesis of matter, the particles that come together and create a form, uh, the form itself uh, is not eternal in that specific form, but what, for example, the body, the body consists of atoms and photons and matter. So the synthesis of it, so all these atoms and quarks or whatever is the smallest part of matter now, when they come together, they create uh, this synthesis, this, um, this form. But um, the smallest parts of matter stay there forever, they're eternal. But uh, the forms that they're composed and decompose. So matter is eternal, the soul is eternal. So when we see the soul, this point of light that has consciousness, eternity comes with this. So when we change our vision, instead of seeing only the body, when we see the one who is using the body, then this starts bringing a sense of security because we start experiencing our immortality, our eternity. And this is such a different way of relating with the self and others in life. One of the biggest fears that is a very old habit in us, one of our biggest worries is connected with thinking of the self as mortal. Because we see half picture, we see only the body and the body decomposes at some point, it's not there in that form. It's again a play of matter. Matter uh, changes forms. So when the body changes its form, we think that we also go with the body because we identify with the body and think we also die. So this creates such a uh, insecurity within each one of us because our nature regardless what we think our nature does not change our nature is always there so we are always immortal we are eternal i mean we are always we are eternal and we are this source of consciousness that never dies and has a certain personality our personality is constant happiness, this contentment, this love. This is who we are. This is what this silent being is and can experience constantly if we are not trapped in what we think that we are or what we think life is about. So when we know the self, as an immortal being of light, when we experience the self in this way, then I can observe the changes that happen in the physical dimension, in the physical world, because there are laws in this physical world, in matter. There are laws, and the law is change, constant change. So the physical world changes, this body changes. So if I think that I am this body and this body changes, it finishes, it ends, then I believe, I think that I will also end. And this comes against my nature. And even if I've forgotten who I am, deep down, we know that we are eternal. We don't feel it in the way we should as a natural state of being, but something in us cannot accept the end. If it was natural, we would, have, we would be able to accept it, but we cannot accept it because it's an illusion. If my body goes, if the form of my body changes, I don't go, 
But because I have identified with the body, I think that I'm going. And this worries me tremendously. I will never accept naturally that I end, that I finish, and all my qualities finish together with my body. And so, in this world, there is a lot of fear, a lot of insecurity, a lot of worry, and we cannot address it with techniques, we cannot address it with superficial methods and ways. We need understanding and we need practice. We have to understand and, uh, how, how things are. We have to see what is what. So if we see this physical world as it is, it is uh, a stage where we perform and this stage and this playground has its own rules, its own laws. And one primary law is the law of change. And it's part of the fun, right? things change because new things come. So if I change the way I see this physical world, which is if I see this world for what it is, it is just an external stage. It's not my home, it is temporarily my home, it is the home of my body. It is where I come to perform. It's a place to visit. So if I see this physical world like this, and if I understand that I'm separate, I'm visiting here, I'm this star that visits here, then if I also realize that my qualities are within me, Love is within me. I am the source of love. I am the source of happiness. I am immortal. So I don't need to chase, chase after this. It's like the sun. The sun is not chasing his, uh, the heat or the light. He is the source of it. So in the same way, we are the source of these qualities. If we say being, we mean these qualities. And these qualities are always within us. This is great news. So if I realize this, and stop mixing these qualities that are within this uh, conscious energy. If I stop mixing these qualities with the physical aspects of this playground, then I will not be afraid that I will lose anything ever. So what has happened is that I have mixed this feeling of security that comes from, be, from me being eternal, this feeling of happiness that is natural within the soul. It's my nature. So I have mixed this feeling of love that's with, with, that is within me with different aspects of this life. So security, I mix it with the house. Security is within me, but when I see a house, I allow this feeling of security to come on the surface. Love is within me, but I associate it only with people. Of course, people are there for me to share these feelings of love. But if they go, love is still within me. I still love them because they never go anyways. What goes is their body, not them. So happiness. I am the source of happiness. I can be happy just being with myself and of course share it when I'm with others. But when any other aspect beyond myself goes and anything physical will go, I'm the same one. I can still experience the same qualities. So what a different way of experiencing life. This is great newness. And this is not newness because we like, we want to bring newness. We just see how things are and they couldn't have been better when we understand really how things are when we bring some clarity in the way we see things we can't but 
stay with the big wow. Everything's wonderful. It couldn't have been better, except we have created our own opinions, our own beliefs about how things are, who we are, and what is the purpose of life, why we are here. Actually, we either don't have answers or the answers we have are very much subjective, very much what we think. That's why for the same basic questions of who am I and why I'm here, we have as many answers as the humans. How come we are all the same human beings and we don't know who we are and what is the purpose of our life? So um, this is something that should be addressed. <laughs> so if someone comes at your door and you ask him, hello, who are you? And he does not have an answer. He says, I don't know. And then you ask him, and why you came here? And he says, I don't know. What would you think of that person? So the same thing with us. We don't know who we are and why we are here in this physical world. And that's why perhaps so many things go wrong. So I think newness is connected with experiencing, with before experiencing, having these answers, basic answers in these questions. And then it's all about remembering. We're talking about newness, but in fact, it is all about remembering the most old, ancient, eternal self. In Greek, we have this word aletheia, which is truth. Truth in Greek is aletheia. A means without, and lithia, lithi, means forgetfulness. So newness is connected with remembering the eternal, very old, ancient self and eternal answers about the nature of life. So what to take, what practical tool can I take from, for me now? So few things that we're going to experiment also with, but just before we experiment and perhaps allow some space for interaction. Um, so, seeing the full picture. So from now on, let me experiment. Whoever I think of, Not to see only this body, but really see it as fun, as a game, as if you have got a magical wand now. And this magical wand is seeing the full picture, being aware not only of this physical body, but visualize a star behind the eyes at the center of the forehead. So whoever you think, and whoever you meet, play with this. So this will bring silence. So coming in this world, not as a critic, critic, not as the one who complains all the time, not as the one who expects all the time, not as a beggar, not as a judge, but as a silent observer that allows things to happen. And this silence carries a benevolent, auspicious, magical energy. We think that by being too clever and fast and noisy and intelligent in a wrong way, we will um, 
be more efficient with life. But the biggest cleverness, intelligence, sufficiency is to be able to be silent because within this silence, there is this healing energy, this benevolent energy that makes magic what words cannot do, what actions cannot do. The silence of this silent witness can do. So this is newness coming in this world more silent, seeing the big picture. And also, another newness I can bring is that coming on this world, coming in the sense every time I wake up in the morning, bring this clarity that I, this source of life, am a guest, guest in this body, guest in matter, guest in this PlayStation, and I enter in order to share my fullness. I don't need anything. I'm here to share. Sharing is our nature. I'm full. I come here full. I need nothing. So creating these thoughts and affirming them as often as possible. And you will never feel bored. You will always experience so much newness within you. New experiences. This is new life. Because life is our feelings. Already we have taken the care of our inner world, of our feelings. And then this will reflect in matter, in the physical world, but it will not matter that much <laughs> because what matters more than anything else is not the material world, but the inner world, and we have already taken care of it without any expenses, just by becoming a little bit more aware just by changing our consciousness. So, better to stop here and just see if there is something you would like to share. Um, sister, I understand what you have said and, but I just feel that, you know, uh, this can be, forgive me for saying so, but do you think spirituality is easier when you are alone and not in challenging relationships, be it personal or professional? Because then you kind of forget what we have just learned. Uh, we are not here to be alone. We are here to be with others. Okay. And this is very beautiful. And so I don't think anyone is alone, at least. I mean, there are some people who choose to be alone. Yes. But, uh, most of us, I mean, I don't know the situation of each one, but we constantly relate with others in one way or another. And this is lovely, this is wonderful. So others are, as we say, mirrors. So if there are certain unpleasant feelings within us, then mm -hmm. it's not that others 
are the problem. It's just that they show to us what is within our consciousness. So it's an opportunity then to see more clearly and if there are unpleasant things, change them. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so it's a blessing to be with others because if, if I have made this conscious decision that I want to change, then others are my helpers in this because I have to see what is there to change. So if I don't feel pleasant, pleasant feelings, it's not that because of others, it's because there are still these feelings within me. Everything is happening within us, all feelings are our okay. own creation. So it's not the others. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Om Shanti, um, Anna, mm. can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, just uh, wanted to say that um, we have reached at our 6.30 time, uh, which between 6.30 to 7.30 usually is the um, public meditation hour. Uh, no one new has entered so far. Some new ones might enter later on, but... Um, um, first of all, I wanted to say that, you know, um, I myself found this uh, talk very helpful and uh, one of the things that you have mentioned at the very beginning was that how to go into that um, place of silence or the silent space within and uh, just like uh, the soundproof room, you know, like within this whole busy and uh, noisy house or uh, world. To go into that soundproof room that you don't hear anything out there but silence and uh, that was very um, helpful for uh, knowing how to go into silence um, secondly is that i was wondering if uh, no one has any questions or any um, you know further comments uh, if anybody has anything to say uh, maybe uh, if you if you would like to stay, you can do the you can conduct some meditation commentaries um, carrying on. You know we can continue with the practice. Um, just a suggestion. Yes. yes, maybe we can uh, have um, a few minutes more together, uh, sharing some thoughts that can help the silence and. Uh, then uh, um, perhaps this, this is the best way to uh, finish the session. <laughs> um, I will let you enjoy the rest of your silence and also uh, here I will also stay with silence for some time and um, um, yeah so let's do that and thank you very much for uh, your time for your attention and thank you Lisa for creating this opportunity uh, to connect with you. Thank you. So you said you're going to stay in silence, meaning no commentary, right? Actually, I said I'm going to share some thoughts. Wait. And then uh, Most welcome. Uh, after that, we'll all, we will all stay in silence. And uh, at some point, I will leave from the, at least from the video. So and perhaps from the connection later, because you're, you're having one hour meditation, right? Right, 6.30 to 7.30, which for you would be, what, 4.30 to 5.30? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, so I will join silence with you, but perhaps not necessarily connected through technology, but I will definitely be silent. <laughs> So, thank you and Om Shanti from my end. So we make sure that the body sits comfortably. And 
any position that is comfortably the right position. And you become aware of this inner world of ours, inner life, which is constant, except that our attention has been distracted in this physical world. So we all know that many thoughts have been about people actions, situations, past, future. So many of our thoughts have this content. Everything about this physical world. choice to give a different content in our thoughts to change the subject and we experiment with this now and if there is some resistance if someone within us says Is it possible not to think of people and objects and situations? This is life. Then we tell this someone, because there's always this someone within the head talking. So we tell this someone, you're right. But just for one minute or two minutes, let me experiment with something different, a new way of thinking. You don't need to believe that this is right, this new way, it's just experimenting. So we allow any other thought to come and go And we visualize this silent, absolutely airtight, soundproof space within our head. Can we see, can we see clearly this silent space? There is natural constant silence.
space of peace at home. This is the best place to be. And what's happening here? Does anyone live here? So we see someone. This someone does not have the body. Here everything is of light. Space is of light. The one who lives here forever is a being of light. Like a star. So the silence Space is the home of this being of light. It's also silent. But his silence is so rich. It's full of qualities. The highest qualities. Divine. Deep contentment. Needing nothing to be different. Everything is perfect. feeling of security. Feeling of happiness, silent happiness, silent love. Which words can describe the 
silence. The subtlety, the depth, beauty. choice of being in this silent space. Choice of being silent. It's not only when we sit, but when we come into action. When we go through life, we can play, being in this silent, soundproof, airtight space, so that anything physical, even the thoughts, the feelings of others, happen beyond this silent space. So we can always stay connected with beautiful feelings, share them.